Okay, so before we start, let's make the concept of diabetic dyslipidemia clear, along with some keywords. So, the major concept to make it very easy and clear to understand diabetic dyslipidemia is the rate of production of VLDL and the rate of clearance of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. We will see how these two are affected in the normal scenario or in diabetic dyslipidemia. So let's take a brief of the keywords that we're going to use. The production of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, whether they are VLDL or chylomicrons, the clearance of these lipoproteins, blood glucose and free fatty acids, which are substrates, the role of insulin in regulation of LDL receptors, reverse cholesterol transport pathway, interaction of lipoproteins with the LDL receptors, residence time of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, and how this results in premature atherosclerosis. Okay, so starting with the normal pathway, normally there is a normal amount of blood glucose and free fatty acids which result in the normal production of VLDL. Also, normal amounts of insulin result in the normal regulation of several processes, including the number of LDL receptors on the liver surface, which leads to the normal clearance of triglyceride-rich lipoproteins. So what happens in diabetic dyslipidemia? In diabetes, excessive amounts of substrates lead to the overproduction of the LDL particles. Not just that, this overproduction leads to the alteration of reverse cholesterol transport pathway, leading to the production of lipoproteins of altered composition. This leads to their poor interaction with the LDL receptors on the liver surface, leading to their decreased clearance. So, the overproduction of VLDL and the decreased clearance of the triglyceride-rich particles lead to their accumulation and increased residence time inside the circulation, leading to premature atherosclerosis. So, I hope the concept is clear for you now, that in diabetic dyslipidemia, there is increased rate of production of VLDL particles and decreased clearance, which leads to increased residence time and therefore resulting in diabetic dyslipidemia. This applies to patients with uncontrolled type 1 diabetes mellitus or insulin resistant type 2 diabetes, as we are going to see in the full lecture. We will also understand how statins are the cornerstone in the treatment of this condition.